Understanding bond polarity is very important as it plays a role in molecular polarity and as a result of that, a role in the intermolecular forces that exist between molecules. What is most important to understand about bond polarity is the electronegativity of an element, which is the ability of an atom in a molecule to attract the bonding electron pair. So we know as an example that in a hydrogen molecule, the molecule is formed as a result of the sharing of their valence electrons between two hydrogen atoms, where each hydrogen atom is attracted to that bonding electron pair, and that mutual attraction to the same thing is what holds them or bonds them together. Since these are the same atom, or they have the same electronegativity, where hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.1, their force of attraction on that bonding pair is equal, and as a result, the bonding pair is shared equally between them. We can see an example of where we have a weakly polar covalent bond, where this was a non-polar covalent bond. We say it's non-polar because the electrons stay exactly between the two atoms. Where a weakly polar covalent bond would be, for example, like hydrogen iodide, where the bond once again is formed by hydrogen and iodine each sharing a single electron. The difference now is that hydrogen still has an electronegativity of 2.1, but iodine has an electronegativity of 2.7. And so what we can see is there is an electronegativity difference of 0.6. What this tells us is that the bonding electron pair would reside slightly closer to the iodine atom than to the hydrogen atom, which makes this iodine atom slightly negative and the hydrogen slightly positive, which creates a weak dipole and we say that this is a weakly polar covalent bond. We can then see an example of a polar covalent bond by looking at something like hydrogen chloride, where once again the bond is formed as a result of the sharing of an electron pair between these two atoms, but now the electronegativity difference between these two is 0.9, which we can see is much greater, which means that we create a greater dipole between the hydrogen and chlorine atom, which means that those electrons are attracted more towards the chlorine than the hydrogen, and this bigger dipole makes it more polar, and as a result makes the bond a polar covalent bond. And finally, we know that if the electronegativity difference is great enough, Sodium, which has a single valence electron, would lose that electron to chlorine, which is looking for a valence electron, and that transfer of electrons creates a positively charged sodium ion and a negatively charged chlorine ion. We can see that the electronegativity difference between these two is far greater. The electronegativity difference here is 2.1, which tells us that it is no longer a covalent bond, the electron is not being shared, the electron has now been transferred, and as a result we form an ionic bond. What's important to realize is that these are not defined values, this is a spectrum. A spectrum that ranges from an electronegativity difference of zero, which says that the bonding electron pair is shared perfectly between the two, and it is a non-polar covalent bond, and then as that electronegativity difference increases, the molecule becomes slightly polar and then weakly polar and eventually becomes a polar covalent bond. And then if that electronegativity difference continues to increase, we say that the bond polarity increases and as a result eventually you have an ionic bond that exists between the two atoms.